Hello guys, and here we are again. Another week, can you believe how quickly these weeks go? I'm actually in today after six solid days of 10 hours straight of working here on the boat, beginning the wiring install on our boat. Now, Zach and I, and I mean, what a great guy this guy is. He has helped me so much. We've put in some massive days, and then we've gone home and spent another four or five hours every night securing equipment online. And, uh, and learning and thinking through this electrical system. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of where we're at. Uh, it's pretty amazing what we've actually been able to achieve in just six days, and I think we're about a quarter of the way there. So this will give you a bit of a feel for what actually goes into one of these boats, and it's absolutely insane. So over here, we've got a rough in of our electrical panel. I'm not gonna show you too much. I'm gonna give you a quick peek. Check that out. Whoa! I'm not gonna show you any more, because, uh, because quite frankly, I don't want to look at it after this week. But uh, anyway, this week we're going to make some hatches. We're going to get the roof linings for the bathroom that's just behind me done. We're going to get the galley up in place. Lots happening. And just wait to see me demold that stinker. Let's get into it. Janet's in here cutting our tie layers. And uh, <laughs> she's given up on the ladder. Why don't you let me give you the electric thing? Revelation, that thing, isn't it? So we've got a few going on here. We've rejigged the whole room. We're prepared. We've got a couple of these smaller ones here. We're going to just hit them all at once. And we'll hit that bathroom a little bit later on. Um, not overly concerned about it. I'd rather get it right. We can do these ones, get these out of the way pretty quickly. Two layers at least, and then I might even put a layer of 400 on them or a layer of 600. We'll see how we go. Hey. Hi. You're going to want to put your hood on. Yeah, I will. Well, let's do it, eh? All right. Here we go. The parts we're fabricating here are the roof linings for our port head and an additional single panel to complete the lining on the starboard ensuite head. These parts of lining only require minimal reinforcement but must be substantial enough to be secured overhead without any risk of drumming or vibration. They've also got to be easy to clean as well. As I'm led to believe, there's uh, some slight adjustments to them as they were quite troublesome to fit in the previous production version. I'm actually not that looking forward to working overhead and trying to trim them, but uh, we'll get them made up and then I'll start to do a dry fit of them. I may have to make further templates to uh, make sure I get the shape exactly right because I don't want to go chopping them, particularly if, if the moulds are gone and uh, we don't have those moulds to work from again. So... That uh, process took a couple of hours just to knock out those three parts and, uh, and you know, only made them in three layers, two layers of 300, and then a layer of 400 double bias just to finish them off. Very, very light, very, very simple, and, uh, and they were ready to go. Right. <sighs> Last night was almost heart attack material trying to get this bloody kitchen out of its mould. I got it to within about an inch. Got it all released. Janet came up and she said, you are going to damage it if you get too tired. And I have this thing when I get really, really super tired that I just get manic and uh, there's nothing stopping me. And luckily, Janet walked up here with Lexi and, the, and, uh, and talked me out of it. I, I wasn't going to leave it. I was going to basically get it out by hook or by crook. But um, luckily, she talked me out of it and I didn't damage it. So my plan was to, and it was upright, and my plan was to try to lift it up. It certainly wasn't going to happen on my own and uh, and I was starting to leave the things and I could hear cracks and I didn't want any damage to it. So uh, Neil next door just came and helped me lay the mould over on the ground here to take the gravity issue out of the way and I've been able to get some good release. So if you look here, it's actually separated from the mould all the way around and is going to come out of the mould horizontally, which is sort of ideal really, because I don't want to do with the mould, I have to stand it back up and put it back on a trolley to get it out of here. But the problem is, is this here. 
it can't come straight out because of the rebate here now this release here and when you're designing molds very important you think about this and i did actually think about this before i made it i thought i hope it comes out and obviously it has come out once before um and i think it's only ever been used once but this mold has to come this way it can't come straight out so very importantly you can't pull it straight up like you would with any other one it needs to come out on an angle um, and there's a couple of problems with that is that this corner down here is restricting it so you've just got to gently lever it and, and slide it millimeter by millimeter and then eventually i'm going to have to twist it to get it out of the mold um, certainly doable i've already got it three or four inches out so that's um that's a win and hopefully now i should be able to pull it right out and uh, and check out my work Half an hour later, <laughs> oh, now this I got it this far out. It's just it's just a very awkward shape. The problem is I'll gain leverage in one spot and then I'll lose it in another. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's not enjoying it, and I'm not either. Right, uh, you'd think after all these years I'd get this perfect, but uh, never seems to go that way. I've got a bit of a problem right here. Now this top section here is not going to be an issue. It's what we call pre-release, where the thing actually releases from the mould before you get your laminates on. And for some reason, whether there was a little bit too much catalyst in the gel coat at that particular point, it's gone off and shrunk and, uh, and lifted away from the mould. Now, remembering that this part here was actually a countertop, so I'm not concerned at all about this small, what we call a divot in here. It's laminated perfectly, so it's rock solid. Um, the issue I've got, though, is that I've had the same issue right here on the corner, and it's not uncommon. Um, I might have got a bit close with the gun, uh, you know, could have had a little spurt of catalyst at the same time, but this here is certainly a little bit out of shape. Um, I'm going to have to fill and fair this corner here. Look, it's not an exact science, and if you think it's an exact science, then you've got another thing coming, and as far as I'm concerned, I've got the shape. That's all I need. The rest of it, I'm going to have to do a lot of restorative work up there on all the joints and all the modifications I've done. And that's, that's like a walk in the park compared to all the other stuff I've got to deal with. But yeah, that's our kitchen module. Our galley is now complete and it can pretty much be lifted up into the boat at any time now and i'm really happy to have that done good morning good morning what's going on i'm i'm putting release wax on the hatch molds um actually i'm just taking off a layer done these three so let's get just through these molds what are they? and i'm going to do this one i'm going to finish this and then i'm going to put another layer of release wax on remove it and then you're going to gel coat it Yep. And then I'll put the layers of fiberglass on. And then we have to put some foam on, I think, don't we? I think we're probably going to do um, about four layers of um, double bias on this after we put a tie layer on. And then I'll foam it. And then I'll put another couple of layers just to seal the foam what do you in. you mean? You'll do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is Janet's project. I've been kicked out of the man shed. No, Janet kicked out you're just not going to do it i'll end up doing it janet was only saying about half an hour ago how she's really enjoying her she shed <laughs> and uh i've lost my man shed i'm allowed in here just to spray up and then i've got to nick off back to the boat <laughs> but uh yeah so what we've got here we've got the linings so, for our freezer yep uh, janet worked that out because i had no idea what that was so that's the lining in the freezer because i probably open the freezer more than you do uh, this is the front hatches. Remember those holds that Ross put me down that I hated? 
This is the lid for them, so I've no intentions of being so in there. So that's our bow lid. hatch, yeah. Uh, which one's this one? That's an internal roof hatch lining. Ah, that's For a 300 millimeter square hatch, and we've got four of those. That's right. But we don't have one for our larger hatch. So what I'm intending to do is make a product off this, and then I'll make another larger one. I need two other sizes, so I have to make two more molds to make the linings for them. I can buy plastic ones, but that's just not cricket, is it? <laughs> no, you don't see me do some more work. <laughs> um, just making, buying plastic internal linings is just not my... Not my thing, I'd rather have nice gel coat ones because they don't fade and they'll look a lot nicer than the cheap plastic ones that come out of production factories. So that's what I'm planning to do is, is make a product off this, then I'll cut it into four, expand it out to the size I need, make a new version of it, make a mould, and then we'll reproduce the moulds. That's going to take a lot of work, but that's something I can do um, once I've got all the other hoo-ha done. You know, I was thinking, as I've been polishing, that... Um as the moulds are going, which is what's put the pressure on us getting these finished, that we make um, an extra one of each of them so we've got a spare if there's any damage or whatever. And we can always pull a mould off that too. Um, one, yeah, just a little bit of protection so we've got the extras if anything gets broken at sea. I think, I think, what you think? Well, I like that idea because I can replicate it pretty quickly. It's like a half yeah. or an hour's work to yeah. knock out a product and then I can pull a mould off it you know, in 10 years time if I need to, once the moulds are gone. So I'll probably do that with that front one and this one, and I'll have the lining mold for that. So yeah, and that's this a, one is, I don't think we said earlier, this one is for the front hatches. Yep, yeah, so we need yeah. four of those. Yeah, so uh, now we're gonna make five. But we actually need six, because I need a fifth one, and then I need to make a larger hatch for our windlass, because uh, that's gonna be a monster okay. hatch, that one. So yeah, we need six of those. So there's lots of work for Janet. It's good, keep her busy. Nothing else to do, have you? <laughs> Every now and then I have to have a big, big clean out. And uh, of course I've made the galley. Janet and I finished that last week. We're going to bring it up here and fit it in place. We, we are not going to leave it in here. We're going to have to remove it because I've still got a lot of work to do over here. But the nice thing is that now it's made, I can actually fit it in and start to work out the parameters with which I've got to work. I've actually decided I'm going to get a kitchen cabinet manufacturer to form the carcasses to go within the kitchen galley module. Um, I was going to make foam cabinets, but he's come up with a concept that is uh, basically, it's like a melamine, but it's on plastic sheets. So it's actually rot proof, ultra light. It's almost as light as foam, not quite as light. It's almost like a starboard lumber. And it's only gonna be quite thin, but we'll, we'll screw it together with uh, stainless screws. And the nice thing is then we're gonna have a really nice clean surface with which to work with inside the kitchen. So we'll make a number of those, screw it all together, and then slide the module over the top and glass it in place. But I've cleared this area here now. We're gonna get it in place. Ellen, my daughter, uh, her boyfriend, Zach, and, uh, and Janet are coming up soon to give me a hand to get it up in here. It's not heavy, it's just very, very awkward. And I certainly couldn't get it up here on my own like I did with a couple of the other ones. So we'll give that a crack. So Janet, can you just grab that in? Not it. Someone's taking all of my weight. Probably me. I think there's more weight where Ellen is than where yeah. you are. It's not heavy, is it? Just the big one. I was going to try it on my own, but I don't think it's worth it. Yeah. Yep. Right. Go on, Dad. How are you going on? Yep. Yeah. Just like that, Dad. Hang on, just filming. It's pretty easy, eh? This is pretty good. You go in there, you can just press that line. Yeah. Just watch that line. Can we just get up and see you? Yeah, come up now. Do you have like a, a little bottle? Yeah, but if I no, get the we've got it. We've got it. I'm going to go through and I'm going to... Yeah, it's just be... I can't really see what's going on over there. Yeah. Yeah. I need... If we... Go, go that way. Go that way. Yeah, okay. You can pass it. Yeah, I'm past it. Yeah, right. I'm waiting for a second. Well, that's it. Oh, that's it. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Just watch that vital list behind you, won't you? The acetone. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got four coming up from the side. That was pretty easy. You right, Ellen? Did well. It almost pushed me over the side. What? You were like getting angry at me for going, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're like, don't get angry. I'm like, just tell me you to drop your kitchen. I wasn't getting angry. I was more worried about you going over the edge. Yep, perfect. Spot on. Straighten it up. I'm going to go and dead straight, boys. Only just going to fit. Go and dead straight. Oh, look at that. Wow. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Lower it down. Lower it down. That's it. Alright, okay. Bring it around. Now, don't walk on that platform. Don't walk on that platform. Okay. Yep. Use the kickboard to lower it. Right. Glass. glass door there, another one there, another one there. One. No, those fold, they fold that way, two fold that way, and two fold that way. We don't even have enough room to walk through because if you've got five fold doors going this way as well. No, they open right out to here. The whole thing's open. That one at Sandwich is the only place that has one like that. It's a lot higher than you think. It's going to be lower than that. Yeah, I was going to say. It'll be a lot lower. It's going to have about eight inches taken off it. So that kick. That bottom flange, that kick here, yeah, the bottom gets taken off, so it'll be that much lower. All right, so Zach and I are going to undertake the electrics, aren't we, mate? We are. The full whole gambit, and uh, we've just been going through the boat, having a bit of a quick discussion so we can get our head around it. We've got a full Victron system, and uh, we've got a multi-plus 2, 240-volt inverter, and everything we've got, we've got all of that, haven't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got the AC and DC panels ordered. We're probably going to have to get an electrician in to do the final AC bit, but uh, we're going to do all the DC ourselves. And uh, we're just trying to work out where we've got room with the helm station. We've sort of just had a rough idea what we're going to do. The other thing we're going to do, and uh, I want to just follow us here. Okay, so to give you an idea where our electricals are going to be, this door here is our DC panel and our battery monitor mm -hmm. and our bilge pump alarms and everything will probably be right on here. And this here is another door with the, the AC panel. So I've got that squared away. I've also got access to put another one in there if we need to, which I probably will because that'll give us access to all the wiring. But everything's gonna be in behind here. So I've left this loose for this room. Up inside there, we've got room to hang our complete multi-plus system. We can get it out. We can get it out. That's all right. Let's undo it now. But there's a big panel area there that I can fit all of that multi-plus before the curve wraps around. And then also we can put our air conditioner on the other side of the battery bank. So we'll have our lithiums in the middle, obviously for weight distribution, our Victron system in behind here, and then here. We'll have behind that another panel which will have all our wiring with our DC and our AC here going straight down into these conduits and across into the conduits on the other side. So is there any concern about here? Uh, no, about it's together? actually a pretty good area for it. Who goes doing and decide which bit you need flow coding so you can start the electric? Well, that's in here. So that's in here. All of this underneath right. here is so done. And we can just... the hatches this week and then I'll start the flow coding and then you can get started. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we need to start, we can start cutting the I'll nice cut, moulds up. Yeah, yeah. I'll cut, cut out this. I'm just going to cut this out. I probably won't make it that big. The panel's only got 280 by 300, but I'll cut out a fair size door and we'll leave room for the other ones, which is our. Yeah, circuit breakers for the winches and the yep. and the um and the windlass and the like. So and then I think what we probably do is we might make looms to run through. We'll just pull them through. So I've got a conduit here that runs through to here. So I've got a windlass pipe here that runs over to the windlass, and uh, and basically we've got to work out how we're going to get electrics into here. In fact, we could probably come up over the top for the lights. For some of them, so we're just that's that's where the complication is going to be is working all that out. But I'm confident, mate. We can do it. We can do it. I reckon we've we got to do it because I've basically decided we're going to do it. We've bought all the gear, we've got it all. We've got everything sitting in our bedroom at the moment. It's my bedside table, is our electric system. It's a big pile. I've it's a big it. pile. Yeah, it's a big pile. It's going to be good. But yeah, I think it'll be good. I think we can manage it, mate. Sure. Cool.